friends, welcome to Nessa's Nook, and today I'm going to go ahead and use up some of that hamburger that um, I, I got delivered from Gordon Food Services, and last night I used some of it for hamburgers, and there's a video for that, and I'm going to make probably like a triple batch of the meatloaf uh, mixture, because what I'm going to be doing is, I don't care for meatloaf, my husband loves meatloaf. I just, I, I've just never been a fan of meatloaf. I don't know why. Um, I couldn't tell you why. But I do like uh, the Philly steak meatloaf or Philly cheese, Philly cheese, or Philly meatloaf. So I'm going to go ahead and yesterday, I don't know what happened. We have the garage and my husband parks in there because he leaves in the morning and I work from home. So I don't, there's no reason for him to not park in the garage so he lowered the garage door and I had you know the box of 12 of the new mushrooms that I bought yesterday in the garage because there wasn't really room for it in the refrigerator I could have made room I didn't want to but I thought okay well the refrigerator or the garage is really nice and cold so that's not a problem right somehow the bay door stayed open all night and I guess we were supposed to get like negative one or something last night so the mushrooms kind of like froze. So I'm hoping that they're salvageable enough and um, everything's going to be fine. But I'll bring it down here. You guys have seen in my videos before. Um, these are like my favorite choppers. And I like to have the smaller vegetables because I'm using, I'm going to be using a small pan. And so I'll cut up the mushrooms here. And I have my green pepper I ordered in from Gordon Food Services. And so far these seem to be chopping. So I think those will be okay. The other ones that's out there in my garage. So we got these all nice and chopped. That's very quick if you want one of those choppers. I, this is like my most favorite non-electric gadget. And let me go get the hamburger and I'll be right back. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pour these mushrooms in this other bowl because I want to cut up some onions. I don't want to have a lot of onions, but I'm going to have a little bit of onions. That's the fresh, and I'll actually put some that's probably uh, freeze-dried actually in the mixture. So I'm going to take those, some of those onions I had left over from yesterday's dinner. Get those chopped. Not that tomato, I can leave that just sitting over there for a second. But what I'm just gonna be doing is I'll be only be making the one on film, but what I'm gonna be doing is making the other um, two, and I will like flash freeze those, and I'll be putting them in the freeze dryer or freeze dryer in the freezer and then what's going to happen is when they're frozen then I'll go ahead and pull those out put them in a vacuum sealer bag and that should be good to go so let me go ahead and move this off to the side and usually let me get my spices out first get my spices because I don't want to have to have dirty hands while I'm trying to mess with that. I'm trying to do this on my last break. My day got away from me a little bit today. I need those freeze dried onions too. I'm going to put a little bit of the freeze dried onions and green peppers actually in the mixture too. Um, that's the way I do make my meatballs and um, meatloaf. But I'm not going to be making, it's going to be like, that should probably easily do the three. I take off my rings, but my fingers are swelled and my rings won't come off. So we won't be taking off my rings today. Just have to clean my hands really super well. So that's probably about close to, probably close to almost a cup of oatmeal. And this would be probably um, 
this would probably be probably a pound and a half, two pounds of meat. All right. Put the pepper, some onion powder. Of course, I just stirred that up yesterday. I'm not for sure how, maybe it's just the wrong container I have for my onion powder. I'm not a super fan of my onion powder being freeze dried. I've done it dehydrated and it works just fine. A little bit of salt, pepper, and garlic right there. And what I'm just going to do is start to mix this together. Now, some people do use eggs. And usually, what I usually do, honestly, is um, uh, mix this actually in my KitchenAid stand mixer. But I won't be doing that today. And obviously the thing is to try to make sure that this is going to be something that's going to stick together, which you can see already does. That's why I don't really use the egg. I mean, like I said, I know a lot of people do use the egg in this, but I don't. The hamburgers are really cold. And that looks pretty mixed. I'm going to turn this off for a minute. I'm going to get that stuff out, wash my hands. I'll be right back. All right. So what I'm going to do is spray my little pan. And these are like little Temptations ones. These, these are so cute. So I'm going to spray my pan a little bit. And then what you're only going to do is fill up like half of it. You know, squish it down and everything. Because you want to leave room for the goodies in between. So I have some provolone cheese here. Provolone cheese. All right. And then I have some of my onions. Some of my mushrooms. And I'll probably end up, because that took hardly none of this, <laughs> so I'll probably end up with a few of these more in the freezer than I had expected. But that's okay because sometimes on these meals where you can just make it once and just reuse it, that makes it nice too. Sometimes this cheese comes off here really good and sometimes it just does not. So kind of like tuck that in there. Now I always do um, add a pan underneath this because, you know, it has a tendency to spill over. So that's how all of them are going to look, and I'll freeze them in this little container. And I'm going to go ahead and put this over there in the June, and I'll bring you back once this is actually done. All right, that amount of hamburger actually made four of these mini meatloafs. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to see if this will fit in that gallon size food saver bag, and I'll just kind of like vacuum seal them all together. And um, if that works, I'll bring you right back. And look at that, friends. So let me go ahead and get the vacuum sealed. I'll be right back. Look at that. All nice and vacuum sealed. Um, then obviously when I take out this first one, then I'll re-vacuum seal it um, and have these ready for the other ones. Meanwhile, this is going to go in the freezer, and this is going to save me obviously a lot more time when I do want to have a meatloaf, because like I said, my husband could eat meatloaf all the time, um, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. So 
I'm going to have like what my mom had when she had meatloaf. We always had macaroni and cheese. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cook up some of the um, elbow macaronis. And then I have my uh, cheddar cheese, liquid cheese that I recan. And then I'll probably have, you know, let's have broccoli tonight. Yes, we'll have broccoli with this instead of um, uh, green beans or corn like we usually do. So broccoli it will be. I'll steam the broccoli and I'll bring you over for that whole thing. And um, let me show you what this is looking like over here. Okay, that's been cooking for probably about uh, 22 minutes because I put a half an hour on there at 325, but I did put it on convection. And obviously, I don't know for sure if it will be done, but I have more time to cook it because Mark's not home yet. All right, the water is boiling for the noodles. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of those in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put on the, the burner for the broccoli. And it's actually in a steamer basket. And I will be back. All right, so the noodles are done. I'm gonna go ahead and just drain those real quick. I'm not gonna rinse them or anything. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my jar of the pre-done liquid cheese. So this ends up being pretty much like Velveeta without Velveeta's price. I like to add a little bit of milk in there because I like mine extra creamy. Add a little bit of salt and pepper. Mixing that all up, see if I need any more milk or not. Well, maybe just a smidge. Like I said, I don't care for dry food, so I don't like to have it where it's just you have to pretty much choke it down just to swallow it or whatever. So, pretty much, this is done. It'll just stay here and warm for a little bit. Um, the broccoli just has a few more minutes, and the broccoli will be done. And um, we just have to wait for Mark to get home. So I'll be back. So there's the meatloaf, and uh, that's all nice and done. And I'm glad I did put that uh, pan underneath there because the pan, this did spill over a little bit on the sides, like I thought it would. So all we gotta do is just cut this into pieces and then we're just gonna go ahead and put this on the plate and I'll show you when we get this all plated up. All right, so here we go and um, put some butter on the broccoli there. And I'll show you up closer. Mine kind of like fell apart so I can show you mine a little bit better. But that ended up showing up pretty good. I don't know if you can see like the cheese and the vegetables and stuff in there. So this is dinner tonight and um, thank you very much for stopping by. And my question to you guys is <clears throat> how do you make your guys' meatloaf? Is it anything different than how I make mine? Um, what do you do differently? Show me down below. So thank you again for stopping by. You have a very blessed and wonderful day.